This is five on your side at 10, focused on you. Right now at 10, we begin with new information in a Thanksgiving Day fatal shooting in Cahokia Heights. Police believe the person who shot and killed a teenager might be a teenager himself. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. Investigators found two teens shot inside of a stolen car Thursday. Now the search is on to find the killer. Five on your side is Robert Townsend with the very latest. It started out as a typical festive Thanksgiving for the Gerlach family in Cahokia Heights. Well, we had our whole family over for Thanksgiving. But by 4 Thursday afternoon, my son went out for a walk and he noticed that there was this car resting against our guest car. Police got to the 300 block of Adele Avenue and found two teens had been shot inside a black Honda Accord. Investigators said the car didn't have any license plates and was reported stolen from Fairview Heights Thursday morning. Police say 16 year old Markel Staples, the front seat passenger, died after being shot in his head. It's shocking because we never, ever have anything in our neighborhood. Police say the wounded 17-year-old driver underwent surgery Friday. But the first guy I seen in there, he was all bloody. He could barely talk. But when the police officer got here, he talked to the police officer. Police believe someone sitting in the back seat of the car shot the two victims and then ran off. When officers got to the scene, they found a rear passenger door opened. So it definitely went on our heartstrings because that's hard on doing that. Being a mom myself, I feel sorry for that. On a holiday yet? That's gotta be hard on the parents. Police say the suspect, possibly a teenager himself, is known to police. It's very sad, especially with them being teenagers. Investigators also believe everyone in that car knew each other. They're asking anyone who knows anything about this crime to call the Cahokia Heights Police Department. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Hostages are coming home, crossing the Rafa border today, and local faith leaders are hoping more will be set free. In Creve Corps, Jewish congregation has been praying for the release of the 240 people held captive by Hamas. Pictures of each were placed on chairs in their sanctuary, but pictures of 13 will no longer be on display. That's because they were released today and are now reunited with their families. They're just as much a part of us as we are, and it could have been any of us is how we feel about it. And so praying alongside them here in our sanctuary has been a really important piece for us to, to remind ourselves that we may be praying in freedom right now here in St. Louis, um, but there are people in Israel that were taken to Gaza that don't have that freedom right now. Congresswoman Cori Bush says the release proves the effectiveness of diplomacy over military force. And just hours ago, a pro-Palestinian protest happened in De Pere. Marchers took to the streets by Manchester and Ballas Road, not too far from West County Center. Nearly 100 people were on hand. You can get the latest updates on the war and those impacted by texting Israel to 314-425-5355. License plate readers are now in place at the West County Center in De Pere, just in time for Black Friday. There are four cameras at the entrances to the mall. Police say they can read plates and it will send info to them in about 30 seconds. At any given time, about four officers are working at the shopping center and K-9 units are on hand to detect guns throughout the mall. Well, if you're going to be traveling on Manchester and West County, expect heavy traffic, and that's due to holiday shoppers. That's why today police were on hand along Highland Boulevard to help ease the flow of traffic. They will continue to work in that part of Manchester every Saturday and Sunday until Christmas. Well, we're ending out our week on a cold note, and it looks like it's going to get even colder. Chief Meteorologist Scott Cotto now with the weather first forecast. And Brent, we actually have a couple of snowflake chances here, especially north and west of St. Louis as we head into tomorrow night, early Sunday morning. Most of us are not going to see anything that's going to amount to accumulating snow, but maybe up towards Bowling Green and perhaps as close to St. Louis as Troy, you get a little dusting very early Sunday morning before it melts. Right now over at the Missouri Botanical Garden, yes, it's a chilly night. 
Garden glow though going on tomorrow night. It should be dry tomorrow night for that and Sunday evening by that point any precipitation has moved out, but it is going to be chilly similar to what we have right now. Temperatures are in the lower 30s around the St. Louis area. Officially St. Louis coming in at 35 degrees from St. Louis Lambert International. What you see on the radar screen up to our north, that snow, that's not even part of the equation for what's going to happen tomorrow night and into early on Sunday. What is a dry and bright Saturday for most of us, but chilly only in the 40s tomorrow, and then it gets damp later Saturday night into early on Sunday with a chance for a few flakes. We'll break that down and give you a heads up on traveling west and north in a few minutes. Brent. All right, we'll see you then, Scott. Energy, entertainment and excitement taking over downtown St. Louis tonight. Let's take you now to the scene of the Give Black Ball at Live by Lowe's. This is a celebration of culture and service. Local rapper Reggie Son promotes the event every year on Black Friday as people gather to not only enjoy live music, but to also recognize those making an impact in education and the arts. The same way people have supported me and uplifted me throughout my career, I want to uplift other individuals throughout the city who I see, you know, uplifting others because uh, we got to contribute to that positive side because we see the negative, but we want to bring light to other uh, people doing magn magnificent things here in the city. Each year, a portion of the proceeds benefits local groups. This year's honorees are the Ungun Institute and Date Ideas and Things to Do. And still ahead, the day after Thanksgiving begs the question, what to do with those leftovers? Consumer reports with tips on how to safely store your stuffing. 